Welcome back to another From Mill to Still with Muddy River Distillery in the Mount Holly Cotton Mill. Thank you so much for watching this two-part series on what hopefully is the most intense thing we have to do on this property. We are removing the original first floor system from the building. So after long deliberation and scratching our heads and meeting several contractors, including engineers and builders and all that, specialists, blah, blah, blah. After removing all the suspicious flooring, we were prepared to start removing the structure itself. It is some rotten wood, some steel, some tongue and groove, some heavy timber, all stacked on top of old piers and footings and stacked stones and dirt and I mean, even boulders the size of my my house. This is a really cool thing to watch, you know, looking back at everything, because doing it was was not very pleasant. You know, in order to remove all of this floor, you can see here we had to cut up individual sections, removing the tongue and groove pieces. Uh, there was hand-driven hand nails and spikes, up to eight-inch spikes holding everything down. So like it had to come up one piece by one piece. And it wasn't just to remove it and throw it in a dumpster or a bonfire. It was to remove it so that we could reuse it either on the third floor or sell it to um, other people to use. A lot of this wood we're going to have to use to fix other parts of the building that have been you know, not very well taken care of. You'll see later in the video, we're going to be lifting wood upstairs. All this hardwood that you see here we're actually taking that hardwood and uh, patching floors with it. We're saving it just in case we were to put floor back in certain places. Um, and we may sell some of it. We may do some decorating with it. Who knows? Uh, here you see the heavy timbers. These are three and a half. Well, we call them four by eights. Uh, and they've got a nice uh, bevel inside. That would be the, the face side of the board. And the spikes that they're pulling out, they're pulling them out first with... Um, with uh, four foot crowbars and they're denailing them so these things had three quarter inch by three inch tongue and groove splines running between them and then the spikes and you couldn't just rip them up they had to be very carefully removed so you didn't break the the components of the material then we'd stack it then some of it we put on a trailer to send off some of it we stacked upstairs and uh you're definitely going to want to check out the video coming out down the road of us reassembling the third floor um, that's interesting to see us kind of in, a, in the modern age put things back in a very classic way it'll be cool these are old walls and uh, some flooring that have been stacked not denailed we're just gonna use this to build walls temporary shoring all the structural repairs will be done with this that's another cool thing that you're gonna want to stay tuned for is um, the, the structural repairs on this building are going to be insane the entire middle section of this building is being risen three inches which is is scary just to even think about this machine weighs i think one billion pounds we moved this out of that loading dock door at the end of the scene, around the building and up to the second floor, almost exclusively by hand. We disassembled it piece by piece. Um, uh, what is it? Me and Jose actually took it apart and it was crazy. That's Jose right there. Yeah, we took the thing apart together and uh, like some of the components, the sprockets on that machine, we could not, the two of us couldn't pick them up. You're talking 20, 24, 22 inches in diameter, and we could not lift them. Two humans could not lift them. They had to be just shoved off the end. We're going to rebuild that machine on the second floor and restore it, kind of leaving a lot of its original patina, and that'll be the host station. That's a nice uh, depiction of some trash wood there. The underlayment. The way this floor worked is you had 2 by 14s three ply laminated together every other floor joist then you had a steel beam a w12 by 40 no it was like a w12 by 35 so 12 inches tall 35 pounds per foot every other board uh, and they were supported three times across a 22 foot span then on top of those 
beams, you had the structural decking. What this guy here is toting up to the second floor is four by eight material heart pine, tongue and groove four. That formed the structure. So above the beam you had that, then you had three quarter by six inch, so one by sixes laid diagonally. And there he is raising it up to the second floor because that was a rotten hole that we had to cut out. It was awfully convenient. So we had the three quarter structural uh, things laid crosswise to tie the tongue and groove together. And on top of that, you had the one by four maple hardwood uh, that you could see in the mill. And then other parts of the floor had the weird tile that I had to get rid of that one day. This section of flooring right here is the original, original rough sawn. Uh, actually, the, the lintels are wood axe hewn lintels, which is super cool. No one's seen this. No living person has seen this floor. There's a substantial amount of rot, but you see those boards he's standing on. Those are three by 16s. That means they're two and a half inches by 15 and a half inches across, 16 inches across. Uh, I keep forgetting the wood back then when it was three inches, it was three inches. Anyway, massive material, heart pine, 140 year old heart pine. And we saved all the that we possibly could here, which is more than I thought we'd be able to. Uh, we've saved it uh, to rebuild the bar. I think the bar top is going to be made from this heart pine. Heart pine's an interesting thing, it's a really dense, close grain, sappy wood, oily. I don't know how you say it. it like a it's very dense, very strong, but very unlike the two by four you would get at Lowe's. It's basically spaghetti or styrofoam in, in comparison. This heart pine is tough stuff. I mean, I drove a bobcat on top of this rotten floor. I actually fell through about where that mustache guy is standing. That is so cool to see that. You can see a toilet flange on the left side there. The bathrooms for the mill that were built in the late 50s, that's where they were. So there's two toilet flanges there for the men's and women's bathroom. And, you know, since the late 50s, this there was tile on that floor. Those windows were covered up for the longest time. No one has ever seen those windows before we opened them up. Arturo's already gone in and plastered some of those windows just as like a example of what they'll look like. The new floor that we're putting in is going to be 18 inches below the floor that they're standing on right now. So the new floor will give us 18 more head, head, 18 more inches of head height and still two foot of freeboard above the floodplain. So we're safe with the floodplain. Uh, yeah, that's termite damage and rot right there. Which is sad because that's such a nice piece of wood. If Lowe's sold that kind of thing or your local hardware store, I mean, you just can't get it. You can't get wood like that right now. So... That stuff didn't make it, but a lot of it did, which is really cool. More than we need, in fact, so we'll probably be doing something cool with the remainder of it. Maybe building some picnic tables and stuff. Indoor seating. That's actually Carlos right there. He can pick up three times his own body weight. And I'm pretty sure he works 18 hours a day. It's hard for me to keep up with Carlos. You can see where they've stacked up the, the structural timber there, and they'll be chucking that stuff upstairs. Those boards are not light. One of those boards, probably 10 feet of it, 70 pounds. Here you can see we've loaded a trailer with the good stuff. We're actually uh, selling this stuff to another job site. So that's really cool that, you know, this project, every time I turn around, has another special condition that requires us to throw more money at it. And it's just nice every once in a while to see some valuable stuff going out the other end and 
be able to, to recoup some of those costs. I guess you probably already saw, maybe some of you have seen the scrapyard video, which is really cool. We go to the scrapyard and the claw unloads us. I mean, that doesn't pay for lunch barely, but it's still worth it to not just throw that stuff in a dumpster. So that pretty much does it for the demo. Now we're getting into like the next phase where we go from mostly hand removal in the deep sections of the floor to we bring in some of the some of the bigger equipment. We're gonna start using a skid steer to pull up a lot of these structural timbers, pull a lot of the steel out, uh, which was pocketed into the masonry joints. Arturo's then gotta go back fix those joints where that came out that just goes to show you the only thing left on that floor is the four by eight decking and you've got a seven thousand pound skid steer driving on it maybe five i don't know how much those things weigh they weigh enough on four rubber tires that's pretty impressive that that old heart pine can handle that uh the next video will have more stuff about how we get this flooring up how we start digging into the the old crawl space the billions of boulders and trash maybe some artifacts who knows what's down there but um you know stay tuned and watch that uh hopefully in the future you'll see us reusing these steel i-beams to do fun things like build decks and stuff outside
And that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, we appreciate it. If you made it this far in the video and you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe because the content is just getting more, better, -er and awesome. It's it's really getting interesting what we've got going on here. And the, the rebuild is going to be fun to watch. Uh, putting stone in the building and things like that. So like and subscribe. If you don't know Muddy River Distillery, we're in Belmont. We're the oldest legal rum and our rum is the best. So come check us out at the, the distillery. Find us in your local liquor store. Thank you so much and cheers.